Welcome to the small town of Hollyville. My name is Lainey, and I'm here to show you the ropes. Looking around is pretty easy. You can use the right mouse or the keyboard's cursor or W, A, S, and D keys. You can also zoom in and out using the mouse. In front of you, there is a small grid upon which you can place buildings. Those buildings are determined by a series of cards. Let's draw some now and get started. That will do nicely. At the top here is the next card in your build list. It's a school, pretty useful. On the card is a small 3x3 grid with a building icon in the middle. This displays the building's effect on its adjacent tiles. Blue squares represent plus one point, so the school will give plus one points to the tiles immediately adjacent to it. With a card selected, you can now place it. Notice how the blue highlights represent the area effect as displayed on the card. Let's put the school here. You'll notice there are now some plus score markers on the empty tiles that were affected by the school. If we place point collecting buildings on those positive scoring tiles, we'll get points. It just so happens the next card in your build list is a houses card, by far the most common point collecting building. Notice how it tells you on the card if the building collects points or not. So let's get some points. Great. We now have one point due to the combination of the school's area effect and the house. We have a target to reach for each column. Currently, that target is two. You can see your current target right here in the top right. In order to fulfill that target for each column, we need to use a combination of buildings that affect their surroundings and point collecting buildings. Next up, we have a car wash. This card also has some red squares, which means it will have a negative effect on those tiles. But crucially, it has positive effects in the places we need right now to bring our house up to two. Select and place the car wash so that our house is given another point. We now have two points in the first column thanks to our house, school, and car wash. Also notice how the red negative area effect from the car wash cancelled out one of the points from the school. Now the first column is complete, look what happens. See that? The column has been cleared. That means you bank the points from that column, which are then multiplied and added to your total score. It also means you get a new empty column to build in here on the right. The immediate aim of the game is always to clear the first column, but you'll have to plan ahead with your building placements in order to do that for future columns. Those are the basics, but let me show you what happens if you forget to place a point collecting building in a column. Fill this column with the following non-point collecting buildings. If any building area effects spill off the side of the grid, they will have no effect. You can use this to your advantage sometimes. Now we have no point collecting buildings in this column. This will likely happen to you sometimes, but just to be clear, it's something you want to try and avoid. And not just because we have a brewery and factory next to a school. With no means of collecting points, this column cannot reach its target. Therefore, it's just going to sit there while we fill up the rest of the empty land. We need to force clear it. Once the first column is filled, you'll notice this little button flashing at you. All we have to do is click it to force clear. Great! However, force clearing isn't free, it costs you one life. You can see how many lives you have left here. 
Make sure you use your lives sparingly. Once you run out, you'll fail the level. Now see if you can complete past this column here using the next batch of buildings. you're ready for the next challenge. Since you did such a good job at Hollyville, well, apart from the whole school, factory, brewery debacle, which was kind of my fault, I've hired you to develop in the county of Luther Fields, a small commuter town south of the city. You know what to do, just a few small differences this time. You now have two times as many build slots. You can now choose your next building from either of the cards in the white bracket area. Oh, the excitement! Us government employees need to appreciate the little things. I've also thrown some new buildings into the mix. This is a green. Yes, the card is yellow, get used to it. It's one of my favorite entry-level cards. It lets you choose a tile around it to give plus one to. Super useful! All you have to do with the green is place it where you want as normal. Some blue icons will then appear to show you where you can apply the card's buff. Just select where you want to apply the buff. Easy! If you decide to cancel the placement after you have clicked, you can do so by clicking the X icon that appears over the chosen build position. If you ever get confused about what a card does, you can right-click on any card at any time in the game to have a closer look and find out more about what it does. You need to develop the land without running out of lives. This bar here shows you how close you are from completion. It will fill with blueness as you clear columns. One more thing. The column target is now set at three. Nothing you can't handle, right? Good. 
I'm going back to City Hall. I've got so much paperwork to do with the coming election. Catch you later.
Excellent. Did you hear the news? Caribou City has a new mayor. Some guy called Selfridge. Can't wait to meet him. But welcome to Grapefruit District. As you can see, there's not much going on here. So it's a perfect site for redevelopment. You've been doing really well, so I think I'm going to give you a bit more control today. Up until now, you've been using a preset selection of cards. I'm going to change that by teaching you the basics of deck building. You always start the game with 12 cards. These are basic entry level cards, and most of the ones you've been using so far fall into this category. You can tell a card's level by the colored triangle in the top right. This gray pink color represents a basic level card. Remember, you can always right click on a card at any time to find more details about it including its level. There are some other numbers here too. Let's start with the one in orange. This number is the card's expenditure cost. When you play this card, the number here gets added to this bar in the top right. When this bar fills up due to accumulating expenditure from your buildings, your column target will increase by one. So that makes everything harder since then you need to reach that higher target for your future columns. In other words, high expenditure costs are something you want to avoid, as it will make your column target increase faster. But seeing as almost every building has an associated expenditure cost, it's inevitable your target will increase eventually. This other number in yellow here is a bit more positive. This is the card's economy point contribution. In a similar fashion, this number gets added to the yellow bar in the top right. I'll show you what happens when the economy bar fills. Let's place some buildings that are good for our economy. You now have a purchase. You get one every time the yellow bar fills to its maximum. We can spend this on a new card to add to our deck. Look, a new button. This button opens the card shop, and that's exactly what it sounds like. You'll get a choice of four random cards to add to your deck. Good choice. That should keep you going for a little while.
Another area complete. Good morning! Welcome to Randolph, aka Suburbia. I grew up here, so don't screw up. I've got a new card to show you, but to demonstrate, I need you to build a city block. You may have noticed already that if you place buildings of the same color next to each other, they group together. This forms a city block. You can differentiate between blocks by looking at the road layout. Roads will encircle blocks. We've got a few houses here. They are all of the residential class, green, so we can use them to form a block. By default, the maximum block size is four buildings, but you may come across cards that increase this. Place the three houses in a row here. This next card is special because it can give one point to each building on the block. Like the green, however, you can only choose blocks adjacent to it. So select the community hall and place it on a tile next to the residential block. Buildings that affect entire blocks can be really powerful. There's something else I need to make you aware of. Up until now, you've only used cards that are repeatedly cycled in your deck. Some cards, however, are one use only. These cards are usually either more powerful or cost less expenditure to make up for it. You can tell if a card is cycled in your deck repeatedly, or a one-shot card, by the icon in the top left. Look for the circling arrows behind the class icon. As you can see here, the Houses card is cycled in your deck. That means when you've played all the cards in your deck, it will remain along with any other cycling cards. They will get shuffled and you'll start to draw them again. The duplex, on the other hand, is a one-shot card. Once you've played it, the card will be removed from your deck. To make up for the fact it's one use only, the duplex has a nice bonus effect of giving itself two points. You have a duplex available now, so you could put it on one of these tiles. The duplex gives plus two points to itself due to its special ability as listed on the card but placing it here will also make it join your existing residential block, which means it will also get an additional point thanks to your community hall. Or you can place it further out to help you clear a future column. It's your call. Good luck.
Caribou City Way. Aim low and be pleasantly surprised.